All right, I'm going to uh, bring to order the, the meeting of the Green Bay Sexual Offenders Residency Board for uh, July the 8th. Um, so I first want to start off with um, approval of the agenda for July 8th. Can I have a motion to approve the agenda? Make that motion. Seconded. Second. All in, oh. Rachel, do you want us to vote or just by voice? Um, for these first few, you can do by voice. That's fine. All in approval, say aye. 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 Uh, next up is approval of the minutes for June the 10th, 2020. Can I have a motion to approve? Um, point, uh, just clarification, I do believe you have to say, um, ask for anybody opposed because since we're doing voice and we don't know who said aye. Oh, okay. So go back to the first one in terms of approval of the agenda. Is there anybody opposed? No opposed. So the approval of our minutes uh, for uh, June the 10th. Could I have a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, we're gonna start with regular business and our first appeal is Mr. Uh, Cunard, who is joining us again via uh, video. Okay, Mr. Cunard, um, as we get started here today, uh, just a couple of things as we potentially go over your case here, I uh, want you to make sure that um, uh, you uh, do not refer to the victim by personal name or surname. Uh, if we talk about your case, just refer to, the, refer to the person as the victim. Second of all, if we wanna talk uh, to you about uh, any potential um, training that's occurred, uh, you have the right to, the, to do that either in private or uh, public session. Which would you prefer? Probably private, private probably. Okay. All right. Um, so here, hang on a second. I'm just going to pull your stuff here, make sure I got it. Okay. Okay, Mr. Kuhner, you're looking to move to to remanage your current address of 2760 Finger Road. Is that correct? That is correct. All right. Uh, looks like you had your your case was uh, uh, fourth degree sexual assault, uh, and you had a big major years is that correct that's correct okay and when did, i didn't see the date um 2015 i believe okay sir can you tell us uh what you actually did to the victim and how it occurred um because it, it was a touching incident. So um, she said I touched her private part, which I didn't. Um, it occurred in Johnson County, Kansas, um, but it was two years after the incident that she made her statement or gave her statement. And none of it, her statement is true. I didn't. Other than the touching, there's nothing she put down on paper that is correct. So, um, and then two years after the fact, um, it was ruled on by, uh, uh, by a Brown County judge and by a Wisconsin state judge in 2019. Dismissed, but Johnson County picked it up somehow and they wanted to talk to me apparently and they didn't call me or notify me or anything. So they sent the U.S. Marshals over and, and arrested me and threw me in the Brown County Jail for three days and then I bailed myself out. Then my son drove me with our wives over to Kansas City. I surrendered on October 15th of 2019 and came home uh, after 
sitting in front of the judge four times. Um, we got home. He left me go on an outer bond on February 7th. I came home. So I've been under, under house arrest since uh, February 7th. But they won't. I'm supposed to be sentenced because of the virus on April and on Ju June and now July 29th. Um, they're pushing it back, but they won't let me come home unless I got a Wisconsin residence to come to. So that's the purpose uh, is to get approval from the city to live here. Then I can go back to Kansas, get sentenced and come back. Okay, um, sir, in reading the information that was the issue, it says that you, you did admit, admit to touching the, the victim, um, which you said was close to her um, private area. Um, is that true or not true? No, I was playing with her belly button and my hand slipped between her elastic, band, uh, her underwear elastic, and I said, that's it, we're done, you're my, you know, I love you and it'll never happen again. Didn't happen before, it hasn't happened since. So, uh, but like I said, Wisconsin dismissed it, but Kansas, under the laws they have in Kansas, Jessica, Jessica Law, uh, you know, I was supposed to serve just by touching, serve 26 years in prison. So I hired a lawyer and the judge finally agreed to uh, three years probation. Uh, but I, I have, um, Dean, could you go, uh, I'm requesting that you talk to, I think it's Commander, who's on the line, Evil, and find out what exactly he pled guilty to. Uh, I would have to look at what he actually pled guilty to um i do have the criminal complaint and it, the case did start in green bay and was transferred to uh, johnson county kansas and was that just a simply a jurisdictional problem or confusion to that correct it was a jurisdictional problem that's where the uh, incident took place in kansas okay so just to be clear green bay um, did not dismiss the case because of of any factual issues other than the crime did not occur in Brown County, is that correct? That's correct. We did the uh, the investigation here. Uh, we did the forensics interview, the forensic interview here in Green Bay, and we transferred everything over to the jurisdiction in Kansas. We then picked it up and uh, uh, prosecuted. And that's because everything occurred in Kansas. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, and looking at what it was also submitted, yeah, it doesn't look like at least the way I'm I'm reading it here. Um I do see the plea agreement here and was signed. So there is, it, it has been disposed of. It's, it's on page uh, 21. It's not disposed of. Well, it says probation. No, he's not right. been sentenced. He's been convicted, but not sentenced. Correct. Oh, those are the sentencing recommendations. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, is there any more questions specifically around the case for him? Yeah. Go ahead. Why did you plead guilty if you didn't do anything? To stay out of prison. If you, well, are you saying you're in? I'm saying it didn't happen. What's that's what I'm saying. But you pled no contest, correct? Same as guilty, right? I did what my lawyer told me to do, Zach Thomas down in Kansas.
So the evaluation you had done, Michael Boniello, maybe, is that, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. In it, you say you did touch her leg and then went under her waistband, and now you're saying you didn't do that? No, no, I touched her, I was, with her belly button, I said. I was playing with her belly button. Well, it's not what was said in the in the evaluation. The evaluation says you were underneath her dress, underneath her leg, and you you said that you came close to her her genital area, but did not touch it. That's what it says in the in the. Well, I don't know who wrote that down. I didn't write that down. I wrote down what happened. She was my hand slipped down underneath her underwear, but it didn't come close to her vagina and. And I just uh, said, that's it, we're done. Uh, I love you and that's it. It's never happened again. It didn't happen before, it didn't happen again. So it's been going on five years, so. And where does the victim live? She lives about uh, five miles away, deep here. And where did you live at the time that, um, when this all happened? We live this Newberry Avenue, 2767 Newberry Avenue. Sir, how long have you been living at this location that you want to get permanent residence to? A little over two years, two years in April, I believe it was. So how did you, how did you come to us basically because you had to have approval before your sentencing could be, be completed? I have to have a residence to come back to, yes, or else Kansas won't let me come home. Have you, you had any? At, but you were living at Finger Road for the last two years. Did I what? Did you, you have been living at Road for the last yeah. two years, though. Since, since we sold at Newberry, yes. It was April of 17, I believe, or 19, 18, whatever, I don't even know. It's been two years in April, anyway. The big snowstorm, the 30 inches of snowstorm. Look at it. Uh, moved in. Have you had any treatment? Any sex offender treatment? Oh gosh, I'm sorry. Yes, never right. mind. So, how are we going to handle this, Rachel? Um, you need everybody on mute, essentially, other than us. Uh, no, um, Shelby, hopefully you can help me out. Um, she'll send everybody else into the waiting room and then we can just continue. And then when we're done with the private session, we bring everybody back in. Okay. Correct. So let us know when you are ready to do that and then we will. Okay. Yep. So I need, uh, I'm, I'm going to make, uh, Mr. Cunard uh, wants to move to private uh, session to talk about his treatment programs. I need a motion to do so. So moved. Is there a second? I'll second. second it. I'll second. Okay. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. We're going to go to a private session. Okay. We can move back to public session. Okay. Uh, we're now back in public session. We just had a chance to speak with Mr. Kuna in regards to his treatment pro programs uh, and where his status currently is at with that. Um, so with that, um, are there any other direct questions for him on the case or we can open it up uh, to anybody they wanna speak either for or against Mr. Kunard? Um I have a few questions. Let me see if I can toggle between. Okie dokie pokey. Shoot. You have individuals that are listed as your support, Mr. Uh, Counard? Do I have individuals? No, you listed individuals on the app on your um, appeal form. You listed Carrie Counard. Carrie is my son, yes. And where does he live? I don't need he, the address, but. He lives in Deep Pier. And Kip countered? Kip lives in Deep Pier. He's my son. West Deep Pier. West Deep Pier. And 
Chris Delbecki. Crystal is my daughter, and she lives in the pier. Okay. Pier. And is Crystal there as well? Uh, no. No, she's not here right now. No. Okay. My son Kip is here oh, right now. Okay. I'm sorry. I just have to go back looking through something. No further questions. Okay. Um, does anybody want to speak either for or against Mr. Kunar? Alvin, so if your wife wants to speak, she can uh, just, she just has to give her name and address and then uh, she can speak for you. I'm Diane Cunard, and I live here with my husband of 58 years. We're 77 years old. He's been through a lot of medical issues. He's on tons of medication. I just about went crazy when he was in, in jail. And he's never done anything like that. I don't know how it happened. He doesn't understand how it happened. So counseling probably would be a wonderful idea for us, but um, we, you know, just want our last years to be together. I don't want to be separated from him. No, we don't want to move either. And I, yeah, I just can't take another move. It's, you know, I just hope that we can stay here. We have a friend, neighbor, all the neighbors, you know, every we've had friends wherever we go. We've been in Green Bay for 50, probably 54 years and he's been in business he, in, he's never you know never had any anything like this happened and I don't know what else to say I, I'm I'm supporting him because I love him he's my husband and I just want to be with him so ma'am a quick question for you in regards to the incident with the with the, the victim how, how do you think it got to this point where the victim reported it several years later? She went for counseling because she she told her her sister, and then and she counseling, and that's how it got. You know, otherwise none of us knew anything, and it just kind of went on and on, and you know, just. Yeah. You know, My opinion is a Me Too moment okay. kicked in. That's my opinion. Well, ma'am, I just, I just from a from a standpoint, uh, um, do you do you believe the the statement from the victim or the statement that uh, Mr. Cunard gave to the, the the counselor that was doing the interview with him? I I don't know. I I love them both, and I can't disbelieve, but I know. Yeah, it's tough for family here. Um, so. I'm all, you know, um, I, I don't know how something like that can happen, but I just think with, he said six bypasses and aorta repaired. He's got yeah. all kinds of, you know, heart medication. He has diabetes, he's on medication for high blood pressure and all kinds of stuff. And I know that that affects how, how we might function or how we might feel even. Okay. But I know this man, I, I mean, we're married for 58 years, but I mean, I've known him probably four or five years before that. And, you know, we have five, five 14 beautiful grandchildren. And I don't, I don't know. It's, I, it's excuse me. hard on the whole family. Can I ask, when did you find out about this? I found out after, um, after the, um, she went for counseling. So Mr. Cunard, when this happened downstairs and you were called up for dinner, when you went up, you didn't say to anybody what had happened? You didn't, like you just went on as though nothing had happened. Is that... Yeah, we're such a close family, we did every, I mean, ma'am, ma ma I just actually need Mr. Cunard to answer that question. Thank you. It was like we were going on family vacations, or kissing and hugging, and everything was fine for two years afterwards. You know, so 
it was it so, I was, mean, right after it happened where you 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 said this oh, is enough or this stop it or whatever but so then you just never thought of it again no nothing ever happened after that she didn't say nothing she i didn't say nothing and that was it so if i may renee sure when you you told her that it wouldn't happen again, and you're saying that you merely touched her belly button, why did you say it'll never touch your belly button? Because I didn't hear any no. So I was the one that said, no, this has gone way too far. I love you. We're done. I'm not going to ever touch you again. So. In what way did it go too far? It's her belly button. That's what I'm confused about. Well, no, I... I slid my hand on her elastic of her underwear. That that part I'll admit I did. But that was as far as I got, so. Okay, is there anybody else who wants to speak in regards to uh, supporting Mr. Kunar? I, I just, I wanna ask, ask one question. So where we have three years probation, that isn't, that's the recommended sentence, but that hasn't happened. So that is, it, is that correct? That has not happened, that is correct. So what logically you're thinking, you'll go back there and you will be sentenced to three years probation. So you want to serve those in Green Bay. That is correct. And I'm going to try and talk them into two years. And that's up to me and to my lawyer and, my, and the judge because she'll be turned 18 years old, two years from September, so. But that's up to my judge and that's up to my lawyer. So, but if, if this COVID keeps going, they keep pushing it back, I might not get sentenced until who knows when. But I still need, they won't sentence me until I have a residence in to come back to. So that's the point of this. And if you don't have, if you don't have a residence here, you'll have to go back and stay there. Well, I don't know what that, what that's going to come to because I I have no idea but I need a residence here because I want to come back here and they know that my lawyer knows that and they would everybody's hoping that we can get a residence here in Green Bay but uh, that's the point that we're trying to so I, I guess hey Rachel I guess I have a question here since technically he hasn't been convicted no, he is convicted. He's not sentenced. Those are okay, two different okay, things. Okay. All right. Okay. You're right. You're right. We'll see. Um, so is there anybody else that wants to speak in Mr. Cunard's behalf? Are you renting or do you own your home? We're renting. You should okay. have a for renter. Oh, I, yep. Okay. Now you're renting. You do realize that you are free to live anywhere in the area. It's just um, that doesn't necessarily have the um, the restrictions that the city of Green Bay does. Or in fact, there are locations within the city of Green Bay that where you can live without having to um, appear before the board for special permission, correct? I don't know. This was a, this was the, was brought to our attention. This is what we had to do. This is the procedure yes. that we had to go through. That's what we we're going through. I don't so. know, you know, it, it was hard. We had lived in that, our, our house for, um, 40 years. Almost 40 years. And we On sold. Finger Road? No, we had lived in okay. our house. All right. Let me, okay. First of all, Mrs. Counter, please, we're talking to your husband right now. Thank you very much. Mr. Counter, right now, the location you're living in, is that the location where you're living at the time of, I'm sorry, at the time the, um, the no, crime occurred? Let me finish, please. At the time the crime occurred in Kansas, the road address or the Newbury address? Newbury. Okay. And when you sold your home on Newbury, okay, you moved to the Finger Road address, correct? Correct. So how long have you been in the Finger Road address? Since April of 2018. Okay, thank you. All right, is there any more questions for him? Or else I just want to speak and form, then we can we can move on to uh, a motion. 
papers and all that. All right. Uh, does anybody want to make a motion in regards to his appeal to uh, to stay on Finger Road here? I move that that he that he be allowed to stay living on Finger Road. Address specific. Yes. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second that motion. Any discussion? Okay, we're what? ready. To go ahead, I'm sorry. I was going to say that it's my understanding he had he's wearing a bracelet, and he will be under supervision when he comes back. No, he has not been sentenced yet. No, but if he gets sentenced, I'm saying when no. he comes back. He has, okay, Rachel, do you want to talk about the jurisdictional issues about sentencing a Kansas case and whether or not the state of Wisconsin will? Um... I'm, I'm not sure what DOC requirements will be here in Wisconsin. I mean, Kansas can sentence him um, to meet with Kansas probation agents, um, but as far as what transfers over to Wisconsin, I have no clear indication what would transfer over and what would not. Um, he would have to register on the sex offender registry. Other than that, I'm not certain of anything. Right. There, it's because he has not been sentenced. We don't know where probation will be. We don't know what the conditions of probation will be or if there will be conditions of probation, nor do we know whether or not the court will order Mr. Counter to um, uh, successfully complete uh, sex offender treatment. We don't know anything, basically. Okay, um, let's go ahead and unless there's more questions or discussion, let's go ahead and uh, vote. I do have a question. Is the ankle monitor just right now until sentencing? Do we know? Is that, or we have no clue? I would say we don't have a clue at this point because that'd be a part of probation, correct, Melissa? It could be. It that'd depends. Be I mean, we just, like I said, he's not been sentenced. We don't know anything other than in a city right now, and he's got to go back to Kansas to be sentenced. It's up to the court to decide what the court wants to sentence Mr. Counter to. So, and and my understanding is that the motion that's made it's address specific and it's not for specific time period correct that is correct okay i, I would be open to an amendment for a time period well, i think we have to vote on this one yep so let's go ahead and vote i think uh, it was sent out to vote so let's go yeah, ahead and vote uh, Faye, I assume your motion, you wanted to vote for, um, you wanted to vote yes to the motion? Yes. So you don't want to want an amendment, right? We have to vote on this one first before yeah. we can set up a new one. That's what Rachel has said. We need to right. Vote. Okay. If it fails, then we can, <laughs> somebody else can bring up a new motion. Motion passes two to one to one. Okay, sir, you have been approved to uh, live at uh, 2760 Finger Road, address specific. Uh, do you want that sent uh, to that particular location? Uh, yes, please, and to Dory if possible. To who? The landlord. Oh, to the landlord? I can do that too. Yeah, I think we just would send it to you and you can make a copy of it. All right, thank you. All right, thank you very much. Okay, next up is uh, Mr. William Charles Peters. Mr. Peters, are you on the phone? 
You have to I'll unmute them. off mute, sir. There, I unmuted them. All right. Thank you, sir. Okay, we are here to let me just bring up your report again real quick. Apologize. Uh, your request to move to 1280 Doty Street, correct? Is that correct, Mr. Peters? Mr. Peters, are you there? Mr. Peters. We can't, if you're on Mr. Peters, we cannot hear you. Can you hear me now? I can hear you, yes. Okay, yeah, it's 1280 Doughty Street, that's correct. Okay, and you're currently living at, at that location, sir? Yes, I am. How long have you been living there? About five years. Okay, uh, sir, as we go over your, uh, your conviction, again, we ask that you not use a personal name or a surname. Uh, so why don't you first tell us about uh, your case, which looks like your second degree sexual assault, is that correct? That was back on April 19th, it was April 14th, 1995, I was convicted of that. And this, she was between 13 and 14 years old, which where I met her was downtown. Prior to that, we I had I had sexual intercourse with her. That was back in 1995. Okay, did you know how old the, the the person was when you committed that crime? Not really, no, not till after. Okay, how did it come to light that you were that this was brought up for a criminal reference for you, sir? What happened? Um, I was informed by the Green Bay Police. I was had a war arrest warrant out back in '95 for that case. I was living on Maple Street at the time, I believe. Okay, so you, it, you're saying, I mean, so. So you had sexual intercourse with this, with the victim. Um, are, you, are you saying it was consensual from your standpoint? I know the state does not consider that consensual under the age of 16, but yes. is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. Um, officer, do you have any details of the criminal complaint? Um, no, I do not. I'm asking the officer, I'm sorry. Yeah, I have uh, details on the criminal complaint. Can you give us any uh, uh, information as to what the victim said in regards to the incident? Um, and according to the criminal complaint, uh, the victim told Mr. Peters that she was 13 at the time of the incident. Does it say that uh, whether he forced himself on her or not? It appeared that it was consensual. Okay. Uh, sir, you, how long have you been living at this location again, you said? Five years. Okay, did you know of our ordinance? I didn't know about the ordinance until I was told about it. Who told you? I was just told by Christian Terry. Who is? She's a probation and parole office officer. Are you on probation for something else at this point, sir? Yes, but it's not for this case. It's for um, uh, strangulation and battery charge. Okay. That occurred last year, correct? Yeah, 19, 2019. Currently, just currently, um, that was back in November. Can I ask who that was against? Um, 
That was Laura Hint. Do you have do you have any uh, contact with the victim at all anymore? Which no, I do not. I have no contact with the victim. Okay. So are you currently employed? I get disability right now, but I am looking for, no, I'm getting disability, but I am looking for work part-time. So what's your disability, if I may ask? I have a learning disability. Okay. All right, is there any more questions for him or anybody have questions for him regarding the incident? Are you still living with your brother? Yes, I am. He is right next to me. Okay. So none of the charges, criminal history, are against your brother? What's that? No. Okay. Thank you. And did you have treatment? Oh, wait, before, yes, before, I, before go there, sir, you have the right to, to uh, talk about maybe. programs either in public or private session. Which would you prefer? I did have it, but that was back when I was on probation for this offense. That was 25 years ago. But I was looking for the records. They have no records of it, but that was part of my supervision that I had to do the treatment or I wouldn't be off, get off for probation. That was my regulation and rules for the probation. When I was on supervision, they, they told me that I had, to, I, had, I had to have the treatment and then I took the course. But we were looking for the records, but there's no records because they said because it's that far back, they didn't have, they couldn't find it. So it was a system. Okay. And if it wasn't part of the sentence, but my probation officer put that on there for my probation. That was part of my probation that she put on there that I had to have that sex offender treatment. Have you had any anger, alcohol, drug treatment? I didn't do no anger drug treatment, but my probation officer now is she's put me in programs, but right now because of the COVID-19, there's nothing we can do. Right now she's getting everything set up for that. She's getting me enrolled in the programs for anger management and AOD. But I did go through anger management once before. That was a couple of years ago. And Mr. Um, Peters, do you have any yeah. do you have any substance abuse problems that you're seeking treatment for, or attending AA or NA, or have What's you that? have you gone to AA or Anonymous? No, I have not. Like Alcohol Anonymous, I've never been through those programs. Okay. okay. Does anybody else have any more questions for Mr. Peters? Nope. Does anybody want to speak on behalf of Mr. Peters? My brother, well. Sir, I need your name and address for the record, please. Uh, my name is Gerald Peters. I live at 1280 Doherty Street, Green Bay, Wisconsin. Okay, go ahead, sir. Uh, yes, my brother's been doing a real good job. I've been living with him for five years. He minds his own business. He stays home, takes care of the dogs, uh, helps me with the rent, keeps the house clean. Um, he's a very good person. He, doesn't you know doesn't try to find any trouble except for when he was dating this girl but there's he's a good he's a good man he just made a mistake when he was 18 years old and you know 19 and 
you know, and I, he, he understands that he made a mistake and he has to live with that. So what you're saying, sir, just to understand, so the, the other issues that he's had uh, that he's not currently on probation for were related to a relationship he's no longer in? Yes. There's a no contact order, Dean. Yes, the paper. contact order. Yes. Okay. I just it's still in place or not, so. Excuse me, sir? I just didn't know if that was still in place or not. Oh, I'm pretty sure it is because he's on probation, yes. Okay. All right, is there any other questions for Mr. Peters? Um, I don't know if this is from Mr. Peters, but on the landlord letter, she said, who has been signing this form for previous years? What does she mean it, by that? I, you know, because nobody ever knew that we needed to sign a form, and I sent that to her, and I guess maybe she was just wondering what this was about, because I never knew any form had to be signed ever before until the probation officer gave me that letter. Renee, this is Anna. Yes. I spoke with the landlord and that is the case. And she, she asked me if he's gone in front of the board before and I told her no. And she said, oh, okay. She goes, that's why I had that on the letter. She thought he had been submitting this every year. How come you didn't come before us when you moved there first five years ago? Because I didn't know anything about it until my probation officer told me that I had to do the forms. You mean just just recently she told you that? So you... Yeah. So, so you registered with the state, yes, but, yeah. not, but not for Green Bay. Right, because I didn't know anything about for Green Bay because my PO, my, my PO told me, that's when I found out when my PO told me. What address did you give this? Okay, when you registered as a sex offender previously, what address did you... The address that I'm using, that I put on there was this address. Okay, and there's a, okay, just for clarification, Rachel, there's only one registry, correct? It just depends on who you initiate the registration with, whether it's local law enforcement, sheriff's department, or your probation, correct? Yeah, it is No, Mr. One, Peters. There's one state registry protocol. Okay. And you've always used the, this address? Yes. Okay. And how long have you had this particular probation officer? I just got, um, I just started in November with her. Okay. And you were on probation previously, correct? Just got on probation. No, 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 no. 2017. Were you on probation for criminal damage to property and domestic abuse? No, never was. Okay. I had to pay a fine. Okay, you only had to pay a fine. What about your uh, misdemeanor case back in 2011? Were you pro uh, pled guilty or no contest to battery? Did you, did yes, you I, I already said. My no, what I'm asking you is, did you have a probation officer for that offense? I, yeah, that was a 12 months, that was all that was. Okay, and were you living at the 1280 Doty Street address? Then, no, that was a different address. That was a couple of years ago. I was married then. Okay. That was like seven, eight years ago. That was like seven, eight years ago, that one. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, does anybody want to make a motion in regards to Mr. Peters? Motion to approve address specific. Is there a second? I will second. I sent the vote through, Faye. How are you voting? Yes. Oh. 
Motion passes three to one. Okay, sir, you've been approved to address specific to, uh, what was the location again here? Probably Tony. Yep. Um, do you want that sent directly to that one? Yes, please. Okay, we'll do that. Go ahead, sir. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you everybody for their time. Next up is uh, Ms. Polanski. Ms. Polanski, are you on? I will, oh, I don't see her on anymore. make a motion to uh, move her to the next position just in case she comes back on considering that we we seem to always have some issues with this is there a second to that i'll second all in favor say aye 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 uh, opposed okay just we're going to go ahead and move her um to the next uh spot here so we're going to start next with mr leo Basuto. Mr. Basuto, are you on the line? It um, I checked um, inmate uh, custody list or for the county, and it appears as though he's in custody. Hello. Hello. Who just tried to speak? Hello. Yes, who is this? Uh, Sandy Plansky, I'm sorry. That's okay, ma'am. We're just, we moved on to the next person. We're gonna take you up next. So if you just hold on just a moment. Okay, thank you. All right, so um, the fact that he's not here, I'm gonna make a, a motion to deny him to 1239 Claus Street. Second it. All in favor? Oh, actually we got a vote, sorry. All right, so this is a motion to deny. So a yes vote is to deny placement or approval. This is Faye, yes. Okay, motion passes unanimously. Okay, uh, next we'll go okay, to Mrs. Uh, Ms. Uh, Polanski. Yes. Okay, uh, you're looking for the appeal to 627 Harding Street, correct? Correct. All right, hang on a second. Bring this up. So I guess before we get started, just for, for the board here, um, we heard her case back in March, okay? And essentially it failed because there was a tie and there was uh, no one to break that particular tie. And then obviously in, in June, we had issues with communication here. So um, before we get we get started because this is the same address that she's asked before. Um, so I, I guess my open question to the board is, do we wanna go through the entire case again? Um, or is there, do we wanna talk any specifics as to if anything has changed with her? Um, I was not here in March. So I would like to, um, go over her case. Okay, that's all I need to know. So, okay, Ms. Polanski, we're gonna go over your case again um, prior. Um, so as we do that, just refer to the person as the, as the right. and, uh, correct names. So uh, back in uh, 1991, you were convicted of first degree sexual assault um, and you were sentenced to 10 years. Can you tell us what happened in that particular case? I served a little over five and a half years. Um, my crime was inappropriate touching intercourse and oral sex with a minor. How old were you at the time, ma'am? I, gosh, um, 
I think it was around 38. I figured it out. Okay. So, yeah, did, you know, did you know the victims prior to the assault? Pardon? Did you know the victims prior to the assault? Um, yes. Please, okay. Please don't state your relationship to the victims. There's more than one, correct? Correct. Okay. Okay. So, go ahead. No, so I guess my question is, is what was going through your mind as you were doing this? You know, honestly, I don't know. It was a very dark and stressful time of my life. There, there's no excuse for what happened. I'm not minimizing because I am very guilty of what I did. Um, I didn't have a very good support system in place. Uh, I was going through counseling, but the counselor I was going, we were all going to, I knew somebody that worked there and it made it a little difficult to discuss certain issues because I wasn't sure how quiet things were going to be kept. And there wasn't many places to go back then. Can I ask why in March, when you were before the board, you said it was hard to describe what happened because you don't remember, and now you do? Well, because, I want to apologize, because, like I said, it's very difficult for me to talk about. And I, there's certain details I may never remember, but there's... As time goes by, some of it does come back to me. And because it was so traumatic for everybody, including me, it's taken a long time to shake this out into the open in my brain. And I'm still working on this because there's no point in keeping it buried so deeply that I can never truly get past this. It distresses me to this day. So are you, uh, can, are you in any treatment now? Are we, am I, can I ask that or do we have to? Well, first have to, ma'am, you have the right to talk about your treatment programs either in public or private session. Are you okay with a uh, public session or do you want to move to a private session? Uh, public is fine. Okay, go ahead. So are you in any um, treatment now or any counseling or? When I have something that really bothers me, there's a hotline number that I have that I call when I need to talk to somebody or I have very close friends that I can discuss these things with. Like there's somebody I work with, she's a very good friend of mine and she will listen to me and make some suggestions. I've also learned that journaling my thoughts is a very good way for me to deal with issues. I will type everything out that is bothering me. I will print it out. I will read it, think about it. And once I've gotten past that particular issue, I will rip up the paper, which for me is a way to relieve that and get it, get me past that moment. Are we talking, when, when you're talking about issues and you're talking to your friends, your friend about it, are you talking about issues related to this crime? Yes, the, I do. Yeah, I, I can yes, I can trust her with anything. She does not repeat what I say. Now, are you talking about, okay. Is that your friend or when you call the hotline? Well, I've called the hotline once or twice because I didn't have anybody to talk with at the time and the hotline helped me because it got, it helped me get out of my system when I was dealing with that that moment. And that's something I will continue to do is reach out to somebody. And I'm thinking about going back to treatment for a while just to help me with this. But with the COVID, obviously that's not gonna work right now. 
They have telehealth. Is, you, you can right, still for, get therapy, telehealth therapy. Right. I, I'm going to get mental health therapy. I need to do this for me. Nobody else, just me. Pam, are you currently employed? Pardon? Are you currently employed? Yes, I am. I work at All City Communications. How long have you had that position? Uh, three and a half years. Okay. And how long have you been living at this address? Uh, six and a half years. And just, um, Renee, did you have any more questions? I don't want to cut in. No, go ahead. You can go ahead. Okay. Um, Ms. Plansky. Now, you've, yes. lived, you've lived there for six years, and you were um, charged with failure to register. Is that correct? Pardon? I'm sorry. Did you, were you charged with failing to register as a sex offender in 2018? Yes, I mailed in three letters, and somehow but, the state didn't that's not what I'm it. asking. And that's not what I'm okay. asking. What I'm asking okay, I'm is, sorry. that's okay. Yes, Don't worry I was. about it. <laughs> yes, I was charged okay. with that. And you pled no contest? Yes. Okay, and were, did you have a probation officer? I do now, yes. Okay. I was how did you learn given. that? How did you learn that you were not supposed to be living in at your current address without coming before the board? My probation advisor, or probation officer, advised me that I needed to register with the city or get permission to live here. Okay. And when did your probation officer tell you that you needed to um, ask permission from the city? to stay in your residence? Uh, let's see. That would have probably been way back in February. Of? And I sent in, sent in a paperwork originally. What year? This year, 2020. Okay. okay. So I just to be clear, you were... Um, charged in 2019, November, with failure to register, and you were convicted last year in 2019, and you were notified in 20, what, early part of 2020, correct? Yeah. Okay. It may have been late 2019. I don't, I'm sorry, I don't remember specifically. It was either late 19 or early 2020. Okay. And I was given the paperwork. I filled it out and sent it in. I also have my landlady sign the paperwork. Yeah, so back in, in March, she came in front of the board, and it basically was a tie vote, which right. was denial at that particular point. So I guess a, a question is, I guess for the city, Rachel, why didn't we go up there and give notice? Yeah, I, I'm still trying to... Remember everything, it may never happen, but I am working very hard on... Oh, community, police I, officers I don't, were, were, community police officers were notified. Um, I'm not sure why um, nobody came out to visit. Um, and then uh, uh, Ms. Plansky had resubmitted um, another application. Uh, so at that point, um, no citation was issued because she had reapplied with updated information. And Dean, just to be clear, it was, um, I believe I, vo I voted against last time because Ms. Plansky had no proof, I, uh, provided no proof that she compl uh, completed uh, sex offender treatment. She also said she did not remember what happened and she submitted proof and I can honest, I, I can say this and I do have a question. Ms. Plansky, how, do you know how you were able, or do you remember anything about your sex offender treatment? 
Yeah, when I was in Rashida, we had a group that meant weekly. We discussed what happened, and we learned how to recognize our triggers and how to change the reaction. So say somebody was pushing my buttons, I stop and think, or I leave the room to regroup. That's how I'm, that's one of my triggers. Or if I get really stressed, I will listen to relaxing music or read a good book or talk to somebody. And again, the journaling. And also, this was Fond du Lac or Ellsworth. We had to write our letter to our victims, which was never mailed. And I sit in our group to make sure we were not minimizing or blaming. That my also helped. My question for you is how were you able to participate? Remember what happened? Bits and pieces I did remember at that time, and they're the same bits and pieces I remember now. There are some gaps in my memory, yes. And talking with others helped me, as it still does. Contact with your victims now? No. Okay. Which I respect. All right, I, so is there any other questions? I'd like to make a motion. Go ahead. I'd like to make a motion to deny um, Ms. Plansky's request I, I, my prob what my concern is with regard to public safety, she knew she had to register. She failed to register. She, um, the, the fact that Ms. Plans, I don't know how anybody can get anything out of sex offender treatment if they don't remember what happened. They only know bits and pieces. I'm concerned that she's not seeking additional treatment for this, I understand speaking to friends is very helpful. I, due to the nature of this particular offense and the egregious nature of the underlying, I, I'm, I'm very concerned. So my motion is to deny. All right, is there a second? I'll make a second motion. Rachel, you're on mute. You should have the vote. Okay. It's a motion to deny. So yes is to deny, no is. I'll do no. I get a vote. Yours didn't pop up? It did right now. Okay. Motion to deny passes three to one. All right, Ms. Polanski, you've been denied to, to live at 627 Harding Street or Hartung Street. So um, you're gonna have to find a new place uh, to live. Um, and so if you don't, um, uh, remove yourself from that location. Officers will arrive and you're, not only will you be fined, but your landlord will be fined as well. So um, doesn't mean you cannot reapply sometime in the future or to a different location. Now you cannot live at this location. Is there anything I can do to become approved to live here? You know, I can't speak for any, any other board members. Um, but again, I think the, the, the thing that, you know, uh, Melissa brought up in regards to sex offender treatment programs and things that uh, would give us more confidence in terms of understanding uh, where you're currently at would probably be appropriate. 
but you know, oh. I, I can't see. Okay. Uh, sorry, give me to interrupt. Didn't my agent send in the paperwork that was available? I know she emailed it over, and it was supposed to be sent to you. I received. I think everybody received it. I saw that, but even though she showed that provides proof that you t participated in the treatment and completed it, I still have my concerns. Those are the concerns I uh, stated earlier. So how much more would it help getting my, myself back into treatment? Yes. Yeah, I, yes, oh. me too. Okay, I will definitely do that. I will do some research, get myself enrolled in treatment. I will send you proof that I am enrolled in treatment if that will help, not a problem. Speak with your probation officer. That individual is there to help you. Okay, I will speak with her. I will get into treatment and we take it from there. Okay. Ms. Okay. Ms. Plansky, it's, it's important to note that you're, you're not approved to live at that address currently. There is no pending return date or anything like that. You've been denied to live there. I just want to okay. be clear. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. On to the next case. Uh, so, Mr. Joshua Lemerand. It says via telephone. Do we have to call? Hello? Okay. Mr. Lemron? Yeah. Okay, great. We just wanted to go ahead and uh, get up to date on your case. Um, you're back for a 60 day review in regards to um, your treatment program. And again, I just want to give you the option. You can do this in a private or public session, which would you prefer? I can do public. Okay. The so last time we. Uh, we looked at approving you for 60 days pending uh, you giving us information regards to um, uh, bringing proof that you're in treatment. So I'm just going back to look here to see if we got that. So it looks like um, I have here, and correct me if I'm wrong, from Hager Enterprises Limited in terms of your treatment programs. Is that correct, sir? Yeah, with Pablo. Yep. Yeah. Did y'all send you guys the, the letter for my assessment? Yes, we got the yes. letter. All right. So yeah, does, anybody have, does anybody have any questions in regards to this? information well you had your assessment but are you in treatment no from what my my probation officer told me she said that he ain't doing no uh, treatment right now because of the covid and i talked to her last week but i mean <laughs> i'm looking at this letter and it says he is recommended to participate in treatment. Goals of treatment are to be identified and thus behaviors which justified and led to the offense. This is what Pablo said, but you're saying right now there's, he's not seeing anybody? Yeah, that's what my probation officer told me. And she told me that Pablo was supposed to get a hold of me and I don't have his number or anything. Oh, well, it's right here on his letterhead. <laughs> along with yeah, his I, I never got the letter. He said to my probation officer. I'm just saying that if you want to get all of them, that's the number to call. Well, he doesn't have it. You need, Mr. Lemeron, you need to contact your probation officer and see if you can get that information from your probation officer and contact right. um, Pablo because even he may be uh, starting Zoom meetings. That's what a lot of... Um, classes are doing right now all right yeah you know, i gotta call her tomorrow so i would suggest even if you didn't you need to call her and get that information all right all right 
right, what do we want to do here, folks? Do we want to give him an extension to, to get this? Because obviously he has reached out. Um, um, motion, motion to approve address specific for a period of 60 days. And uh, when he returns an update that shows that he's um, starting enrolled and participating, actually started classes. All right. Is there a second to that motion? I will second. All right, I just sent the vote. This is Faye, yes. Okay, thank you. Motion passes unanimously. Okay, sir, uh, you will give a letter indicating uh, that you have to come back in 60 days and have that proof of documentation as requested. All right. All right, thank you. Thank you. Next up is Mr. Curtis Brabs. He's there, but it's on mute. Mr. Brabs, could you take yourself off mute, please? Hello? 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 Hello, can you hear us? Yeah. All right. Okay, last time we had met, uh, we gave you a 60 day um, opportunity to provide documentation. Um, and I'm looking through it here. And you guys see it? I'm like, no, there were, I did not see any. Sir, so you were, you were supposed to provide us uh, documentation from your PO in regards to your treatment programs via Skype? Yeah, uh, they were supposed to be sent. I did the assessment already, and uh, I did three um, like talking sessions with the counselor, and it was mainly just to kind of get to know each other, get to kind of ask a couple questions, and my first group is tomorrow. Who was supposed to send it to, to uh, the city? Uh, my counselor was going to send a copy to my PO and to uh, the city. Um, and I just talked to my PO before this call um, because I was kind of, I didn't know how to get in on a Zoom. I don't really know how to work the electronics that much. But um, as far as I know, um, everybody should have gotten hers already. I had the assessment done right after uh, I talked to you guys last time. And then, like I said, we had three sessions where we just talked on the phone and he asked me a few questions. I asked him a few questions about, um, cause you know, we can't meet in person. So we're just over the phone, but my first class is tomorrow okay. and it's over the phone. Okay, Mr. Brabs, this yeah. is your, it's your response ability to make sure that the people who need to who are supposed to send in the documentation send it in okay that's your responsibility yeah. I, you need to I, call yeah. and make sure that they actually follow I did that. through you didn't i'm saying though you didn't even ask me that i did i just talked to the guy i just talked to him on friday and i just talked to my po right before i talked to you guys well when did, they said it was sent sent. It. when did he say he sent it oh uh, well when i talked to him on Friday, he didn't give me a specific date. He said he sent it to the city. I, told him I needed it, uh, the assessment sent. And he said he was also sending one to my PO, or that he also said sent one to my PO. And when I just talked to my PO, she didn't say anything about it. As far as I know, she got hers too. Well, I'm, I'm not 100% I'm not sure on it, but because I didn't ask her, but she didn't ask me about my assessment or nothing. She knew I was having it done. And She's been in contact with my counselor also. They talk on the phone. May I make a suggestion that, well, make a motion, just motion to approve address specific for a period of 30 days. And in the event that Mr. Brab's counselor sent it off on Friday, giving him the benefit of the doubt, just so we can get things moving along. 
Is there a second to that motion? I will second. All right, you should have to vote. Uh, I, I've done everything that I was supposed to do. Mr. Brad, no, there's sir, a vote going on. Sir, sir you, oh. you haven't? Because again, as Melissa said, they should have sent it to you and you should have brought it to the city. How, That's how well, things look. Well, yeah, That's but, but not they're, what I they're not allowing us to go down to these offices. We can't go in these buildings. That's, that's not exactly what I said. What I said it was his responsibility to make sure that they sent it. Yeah. He, Mr. Brabs already said he spoke to the counselor. The counselor said he sent it without date, providing a date. What I suggest is giving him the benefit of the doubt. We just put it over for 30 days. Yep, and that's the motion. So, so all I can hey. say is, let's see how the vote goes here. So, yeah. hey, what what's your vote? Yes. Uh, motion uh, fails two to two. Okay. Um, motion's failed, um, sir. So at this particular time, um, you can reapply in thirty days, but you're not going to be allowed to live there anymore. And so we're going to have that documentation at this particular so, point. So I have to move out and then go reapply in 30 days? Yep. The motion failed to extend your, your term of 60 days, which was we were supposed I, to have I thought Melissa, days. I thought Melissa just said to extend it for 30 days. That was the motion, and it failed. So she, she gave that suggestion. It was brought to a vote and it was a tie, which means it fails. Okay. Well, look, I, I got I just, any treatment. I've done oh, the assessment. Mr. Brabs, just for a second, can I um, make a suggest, make another motion? I'm thinking of another mo motion. I start the program tomorrow. Okay, Mr. Brabs, we understand you already told us. Just give us a minute, please. How many times has Mr. I, I can't toggle, unfortunately, between all the different um, tabs? How many times has Mr. Brabs been before us for this particular address? If any. February, May, and now today. Okay, the, in February, what was the problem? Why was it put over till May? We gave him. Oh, Miss, wait, Mr. Brabs, just wait. I'm asking, please. So we, again, it, we, we gave him 90 days to get his assessment done. Okay, but that's, we had COVID. We had COVID. Yep, yep. Okay. So in May, what was? So in May, we, we gave him another 60 days to, to get documentation to us that he did get this done. Okay. So he's basically had, you know, 150 days. Okay. Look, I, I've done all, all I can do. And, and not only that, to speak on this, I'm paying for this myself. The county isn't paying, not paying for it. I had to pay for that assessment myself. And I'm paying for every class myself. This is coming out of my pocket. I've done the assessment. I've done three programs with them and my first initial class is tomorrow and i've done everything and i even checked up before because i knew we were heading this class and i called him on friday and he said he's he said he was sent he said okay. he was taking care of it i've done everything i've done uh, okay Mr. ever Brett. since i've been in prison i've worked i i've maintained my own residence vehicle i got my license i have not been in no trouble I've not had no contact with nobody. My PO, they don't. Okay, Mr. Brabs, I, I understand you, Mr. Brabs. I know you're very frustrated. I get that. Can you just hold it a second? Is there any possible way to contact the probation officer to see if the probation officer received any information? N not at 5.30 at night. Okay. Um, Here's what I'm willing to do, Melissa. I mean, I, I'm willing to make, I, I just, I'm willing because to make, here's the thing. We just approved someone who's not been sentenced yet to live within the city of Green Bay, who's never had any sex offender treatment, and we don't know what's going on. And this is somebody who here and has been 
processing? Do you see it? It seems like it just doesn't make sense to me. Well, I, I, I'm not going to just compare this to anybody else's case because every case is different. And so but my, I'm willing to make a motion that I, I, that if the city receives the information by Friday, 5 p.m., that what he's saying is true, then I would grant 30 days so we have a chance then to review it. So I, I'm going to make- What would you, what would you hey, need 30 days hey, for? You, oh. you speak up one more time. I'm just going to deny, we're going to deny you unless you have yeah, a question. Okay, I'm, so you I'm need to sorry. Get quiet. I, I don't you, think that's appropriate. Well, I'm tired of him come jumping he in. He can't we'll see that. us. He doesn't know what we're. He's not. We're not in a room. Yes, but so, he can be quiet until it's his turn to talk, like all the others. He can wait until he's asked to talk. So, and I, I will explain it. So. Well, the motion I, I want to do is essentially give him an opportunity the next two days to get that information. They can fax it, you can email, they can do whatever to the city to prove that it, what he's saying is true, okay? And then he'll come back in 30 days and we have a chance to look at it. So what I'm basically saying is, is I'm gonna give, I'm gonna make a motion to allow him to stay where he's at for an additional 30 days, as long as the information that he said they sent gets to the city by end of day Friday. Now, and then when we have a chance for good at our next meeting, then we can make a final determination. I will second that. Okay, well, I haven't made the motion yet, but that, that's oh, what oh. I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm gonna make a motion, address specific, uh, to allow Mr. Curtis Brabs to stay at 1950 Fiesta Lane for 30 days, so long as the documentation as to his assessment and class um, uh, schedule is submitted to the city by end of day, business 5 p.m. this Friday, which would be July 10th. I second that. All right, the vote has been sent. I'm saying yes. Okay. Motion passes unanimously. Okay, Mr. Brabs, here's, here's what you need to get done, okay? That information that is, was requested in terms of your assessment and your class schedule in regards to your sexual offender treatment needs to be at the city desk no later than 5 p.m. this Friday. If, you, if it's delivered to the city by 5 p.m. on Friday, you automatically uh, for 30 days in that residence and give us a chance to review this so then we can have final disposition on this. So they're, they're gonna need to email it or some way get it to the city Friday, or you're going to be denied. Do you understand that? Yes, I do. And I, I would like to speak for a second. Go ahead. I, I got out of prison on December 10th, 2019. The judge had released me two years early based on good behavior when I filed my early release petition. I had gotten in no trouble while I was in prison. On December 10th, when I got out, on December 16th, I had my license. Four, four days after that, I had my own vehicle and I got it insured. On December 26th, I started work. When the PO came to me about getting assessment done, because I was not court ordered to do treatment. I was only court ordered to do an assessment. I had to sit there and go through all this. I had to pay for that myself out of my money. And the classes that this guy is doing, I have to pay out of my pocket. Every Friday when we do a class, I have to pay for it. And I've done everything. I have been in no trouble with the law. I have had no probation violations, but yet I, I'm sitting here being treated. I told him to send it in. I have never even seen the guy. I have to do everything through the phone. His office isn't even open. 
it's not like it's been very easy to to get through all of this. But Sir, you know, what? I'm sat here and done all this, but yet I'm I'm sitting here being treated like shit. Well, sir, sure. you brought yourself into this own situation by assaulting. Yeah, and my... I've done everything to get myself out of it too. Well, I've I paid for all of this. Well, sir, it, you're getting the opportunity to live in the city of Green Bay when the city itself says we don't want any sexual offenders anywhere near the location you want to live. So this board is giving you the opportunity to live within the city and it's provided a mechanism for that. You know, whether you agree or disagree with that, that's your choice. You can vote for somebody different to change the law. But this I'm board not for it. this board is this board is just giving you this opportunity and, and and the city has allowed that or else there wouldn't yeah. be an opportunity for you to yeah, live but, but, in the city of Green Bay. You, you know what though? Like just like you said, I've been through three of these meetings. And I've heard all of the people talk. And how many times have you guys approved people who haven't even been doing anything? I've done everything that they want me to do. I've sat here and watched you guys. I've seen you on every one. And I've seen you do this. But yet you treat me like, you know, like I'm, I called him on Friday to make sure that it was sent, to make sure it was prepared for today. I just got done calling my PO before I got on the thing to make sure that everything was situated. I've done everything I can do because they didn't do it. You're talking about kicking me out. That's what you were before this motion. Where am I supposed to get this money for rent security deposit to move? I mean- Mr. Bra Mr. Brabs, you, you didn't confirm with the city of Green Bay that your documentation had been received. That's, I, that's what was required of you. I, you know, I, I, have not even received the documentation myself. I've never even seen the assessment. Yeah. I did the assessor the phone with the guy. I've done everything with him over the phone. His office, which is at Oneida Behavioral Health, okay. is not open to the public. They don't even go to work there. He's at his home. I don't have fax machine. I don't have copy machine here. I don't have anything. I don't have nothing. But I work every day. My car is registered. I've done everything I have. Well, and I asked we, them just, and, and they voted. were supposed to stand over one thing, but I'm the one who gets, gets, you know? Mr. Mr. Brabs, your, your agenda item has been voted on. Um, we need to continue on with the meeting. Does he know ex exactly who this has to go to? No, can you guys give me a, a fax number or something so I can contact my PO and let me in the morning and talk to you guys? City, the, the law department's fax number is 920-448-3081. It will be sent tomorrow. I promise you that. Okay. But you know... That I was going to say, that's the facts. How can he check on it? Is there a number he can but check? He should call it? after it's facts. If they say it's facts, he should call the law office. Yeah, yeah. So the, the law office's general phone number is 920-448-3080. Yes, the, the general number and the fax number are one digit off. The main okay. phone number is 3080. The fax is 3081. Okay. All right. Thank it'll you, be Mr. Brabs. It'll be sent tomorrow. Okay. Next up is uh, Mr. Robert Hass. Hey, hello. Can right. you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. All uh, right. <clears throat> Um, all right, Mr. Hass, we're here to hear, hear your appeal to move to 421, correct? Yes, sir. All right, and you were currently at 1617 Kellogg? No, I'm not. Um, I was at 1761 Shano Avenue, apartment 11. Uh, I was discharged this past Sunday. I'm currently staying at the Village Inn until tomorrow morning. You're and then- the, You were at the TLP. No, I'm not anymore. But you I got were, discharged. I got, 
Okay. Yes, I was at the uh, TLP when I applied for 421 Cherry. Okay, and why were you at the TLP, sir? What were you at um, the transitional area for? I was uh, released from uh, Sheboygan County Jail back in April of 20. And what were you released from? Uh, I was released on a signature bond because I was uh, facing a new case from uh, 20 years ago. That got that case got dismissed on April 5th, 2020. Okay, from 20 years ago. Yeah, because uh, what that case was in. Go ahead. That was in regards to a sexual assault case against my brother. Okay. It's dismissed, though. So. Right. Uh, before that, before you were um, uh, at the TLP, were you still at that location where you last approved you at? The last address that you guys approved me at, I got denied because I was in jail. Uh, actually, let me take that back. The address that I applied for two years ago, I was uh, denied because of rule violations. That was at uh, the Kellogg Street. All right. Okay. So it looks like the last two times back in February of 18 and of 18, you're both denied 617 Kellogg and a 421 Cherry Street last time again, uh, back in uh, February of 18. So... <clears throat> I guess a, a the reason why, go ahead. The reason why I was uh, denied uh, 421 Cherry back in February 2018 is because I was doing a sanction because of rule, uh, rule violations I was doing. So how many, how many, how many times have you been involved with the law since November of 17, sir? Three times. Because back when we approved you to 421 Cherry in 17, one of the things we talked about um, was was thinking for change certification of completion. Um, and again, we're talking about your treatment program, so we can go into private session if you prefer. Um, I think you're the last case, though, but I think you're the only one on. But if you want us to go that direction, we can. No, I can go public. Okay. So back then, you know, you were working on your, again, thank you for change certificate of completion. Um, and then you were going to be an SOT uh, treatment as well. Did, did that ever finish happening? Obviously, you know, we, we approved you for that because you brought that in, but did you continue to get completion of your SOT or not? Um, I'm currently in uh, SLT with uh, Marshall Fitzpatrick over the phone, and we meet every Thursday. I uh, I just uh, I asked him on Monday to email uh, Deanna a letter for the board. Yep, we received that. Yep. All uh, right, and then I also I had a uh, uh, a volunteer uh, named uh, Terry. From my circles of support, I'll also send an email to you guys. Yep. I'll do. So, are you currently employed, sir? Yes, sir. Employed for the Saturday will be two months. Where are you at? TNT Crust. Okay. Um, does anybody have any more questions for him? Uh, what I'd like to know is you, you complete, it shows you completed SOT treatment back in October of 2018. Why, well, how many times a week are you meeting with Kirkpatrick and Associates? Um, once a week. Okay. 
And is this one um, individual or group? A group. And why are you meeting with them? Uh, because I have to escort her to uh, do treatment. What? The, for sex offender treatment. Because um, when I completed the SO3 program, my uh, facilitator I had, uh, Rebecca Kearns, she uh, recommended that I do SO4. And is this, it's not in person, is it? Not right now. Okay, so you're doing it on the phone or what? Um, I do it over the phone. Okay, and who is the person that you're actually meeting with? Who's the, the facilitator or the therapist? Um, Marshall uh, uh, Fitzpatrick. Kirkpatrick, got it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sir, why do you think we should approve you to this location this time? Um, I'm currently following my rules. I'm open and honest with my PO with Drew. Um, I'm reaching out for help uh, via Circle of Support, AA. Um, I just started doing attending AA again this past Monday. And this address is a sober living house. So I would like to be around other guys that are in recovery to be able to, you know, reach out if I feel an urge to use. Uh, how many people will live there or do live uh, there? A total of 10 guys. Are there any other sex offenders? Not that I'm aware of. And will you be um, attending any programming while you're living there? Um, a and NA, and any other uh, recovery programs. It all depends on uh, if there's uh, any meetings, uh, like any buildings that have meetings, because I do not have uh, that uh, capability on, on my phone for uh, Zoom or any other uh, um, online uh, thing to attend uh, meetings. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I did not understand that. So if they have, is it a requirement of the sober living house that you attend AA or NA meetings? Yes, it is. Okay. And are those daily, weekly? Um, daily. And do you have to provide proof? Uh, do um, you have to have a card or attendance sheet or something that uh, provides proof that you're attending those meetings? No. Just don't show up? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, the one on Monday nights, uh, the guy that runs the sober living house, he also attends that, uh, that AA meeting. So and he also attends uh, some other ones too. Who, okay, who's in, I see that this is a facility owned by the, um, the Divine Temple Church of God in Christ. Okay, who, what program is it? Is there a particular name? What, uh, uh, address I'm trying to go to? Well, is it a, uh, an, an official program? I can't uh, give you a direct answer because I don't fully know, but the house is called My House. Okay, that's what I was getting at. Thank you. All right, does anybody want to make a motion? Unless there's any more discussion anybody wants, questions? 
Motion to approve address specific. Is there a second? Second. <clears throat> All right, you should have the vote. And mine is yes. Okay, thank you, Faye. Motion passes unanimously. All right, so you've been approved to live at uh, 412. Um, I'm sorry. 412, it should be 421. 421, I'm sorry. Uh, 421 Cherry Street. So uh, we will send it to that location. So it's there unless you want it sent to a different location. Uh, the address will be fine. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, our next meeting is scheduled for August the 12th at 4 p.m. Um, does anybody have anything else they would like to talk about or we can take a motion to dismiss? I just have one question. Rachel, going back to our first person, Alver, Alvin Cunard, are you able to tell me how I voted? Yes, I am. I'm confused on that one. Uh, you voted. You voted no. No against phase. Correct. Approval. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, that's what I wanted to check. Okay, does anybody want to make a motion to dismiss? I'll make a motion to dismiss. There a second or a motion to adjourn adjourn i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> only if we can do this in city hall next month yes please come on we're, i'm working on it i mean we're, we're trying to figure it out <sighs> okay so so who made the motion i Renee? did yes. Alyssa, you're, are you on mute on purpose <laughs> <laughs> dean did you second that motion i'll second it okay and did we take a voice vote or? Take a voice vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We are dismissed. Have a great weekend. <laughs>